بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والنجم إذا هوى ما ضل صاحبكم وما السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز كتب عليكم القتال وهو كره لكم وعسى أن تكرهوا شيئا وهو خير لكم وعسى أن تحبوا شيئا وهو شر لكم والله يعلم وأنتم لا تعلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم As I've been saying the previous past Jummahs that I led here that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our creator. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what is best for us, what is good for us and what is bad for us. He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our own bodies than to the extent we will ever be able to understand. And the Qur'an is our manual. The Qur'an is our guide. Guidance and true guidance can only be attained to the Qur'an. There is no other means of guidance. And Allah tells us right from the beginning, Alif Lam Meem, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه هدل Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Alif Lam Meem, we don't even know what it means. Starts the book off telling us, I'm saying such a statement, you don't even know what it means. That verse at the beginning is meant to humble us. We think we're so smart, so intellectual, we're geniuses, we're masterminds. If we put our heads together, we can accomplish so much. At times, I can do things by myself, I don't need anyone. To the extent I don't even, well, I don't even need Allah's help. Allah is saying, Arif Lam Meem, humble yourself, you don't even know what that means. kitab, this book, La Raiva Fi, there's no doubt in it. Hudallil Muttaqeen, it is a guidance, it is a means of guidance for those who have taqwa. So if the Quran is not guiding you, you're not from Muttaqeen. If the Qur'an is not guiding you, or you think the Qur'an is not guiding you, you're not from amongst muttaqeen. Because Allah told us, our Lord told us, our Creator told us, the Qur'an is a guidance for you. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدًا لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيِّنَاتٍ مِّنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفَرْقَانِ Allah says, I revealed this book in the month of Ramadan. It is a means of guidance for all people. For all people. Allah didn't restrict it to certain people. Hudal lil nas, it is jami'ah, it is for everyone. So if the Quran is our guidance, why aren't we making a stronger effort to be guided? If the Quran is our means of guidance in Hidayah, why is the Quran not being used as our manual to be guided? All the answers to all the problems, to the answer to all of our problems, the solution to all of our problems lies in the Quran. The answers lie in the Quran. The answers lie in the Quran and the teachings of Habib sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this one particular verse that I just recited before you, telling us something for our own good. Sometimes it's possible. You don't like something. You don't like it. It's not making sense to you. It doesn't click. I'm not understanding why this is good for me. I don't like it. Sometimes you don't like something. Because it doesn't make sense to you. Your understanding doesn't allow it to make sense. However, Allah says, It is good for you. Who said it? Not me. To the extent, not even a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah Himself. Allah Himself is saying this. Asa an takra'u shay'a, there's times where you dislike something, wa huwa khayrul lakum, but it's good for you. Wa asa an tuhibbu shay'a, and at times you love something. It makes you feel good, it excites you. It brings joy to you. It satisfies you. Allah says, sharrul lakum, it's bad for you. It's evil for you. It's not good for you. Now as parents and adults, if we have young children and they're sick, we want them to take the medicine. Mom, dad, I don't want to take the medicine, its taste is bitter. It doesn't taste good. Mom, don't force me to take the medicine. Dad, don't force me to take the medicine. It doesn't taste good. It's bitter. I don't want it. From the worldly perspective, we understand that, oh my child, sometimes you dislike something, but it's good for you. This medicine is good for you. You need to take it. Inshallah, through the medicine, Allah will heal you. So suffer a little bit. Suffer a little bit. Take that bitterness and inshallah, it will cure you. But today, it's Valentine's Day. And Allah protect the Muslims around the world and they're celebrating. According to some surveys, the most indecent acts take place on this day. So our children, they see it. They want to be a part of it. This is the verse they should think in their mind. Sometimes you love something, but it's not good for you. Sometimes you love something, but it's not good for you. It'll ruin your life. It'll destroy your life. So at times we love something, but it's not good for you. And at times you hate something or you dislike something, you don't like it, but it's good for you. So at times you like something, but it's bad for you. And at times you hate something, but it's good for you. Who's the one telling us this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now worldly example. And just the other day, I was thinking about this verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates in Surah Bani Israel. And continuing the verse is talking about respecting your parents. If one of them reach old age, make sure you take care of them. Look at the end of this verse. وَخْفِدْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الظُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Look at this verse. Our parents, children, your parents, adults, your parents, our parents have done so much for us, continue to do so much for us, that we will never fully understand what they have done for us. Children, youngsters, kids, we will never understand what our parents... Even if you have children now to this... To even then, you won't understand what your parents did for you. You just won't be able to comprehend it. I'm giving you a worldly example. We'll come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at the worldly example. Our parents have done countless things for us. Things that we... Children cannot even acknowledge or realize that it was done for us. When the baby is crying constantly, the mother grabs the child, holds the child, cuddles the child, feeds the child, takes care of the child, tries to sing the child to sleep, tries to calm the child. 
And when the child becomes one, two, maybe two, three, three, four, the child constantly bothers the mother, constantly bothers the father, constantly bothers the parent. Then they cry. You don't even know how to solve the issue. You don't even know what to do. You don't even know why they're crying. Are they crying because they're hungry? Are they crying because they want candy? Are they crying because they want something? They don't even express themselves, but you're the parents, you love them. My child, why are you crying? I care so much about you. What our parents have done, we will never be able to understand how much they have done for us. So Allah doesn't say, just make Rabbi Rahmhuma. Oh Allah, have mercy on my parents. That's not what Allah said. He said, Wakhid lahuma janah min al rahma. Humble yourself. Calm yourself down. You know, put yourself down. Knock yourself down. Ya Allah, I have no idea the amount of things that my parents have done for me. No idea, Ya Allah. I don't know. So, Rabbi Rahamhuma kama Rabbayani Sagheera. Have mercy upon them just like they had mercy upon me during my upbringing. But in this world, our parents can tell us. We have examples. When we have our own kids, we have an idea of what our parents did for us. When we have our own kids, we have an idea of what our parents did for us. But even then we don't. Because when my, our parents, they didn't have the access to things we do now. They didn't have daycare facilities at the level we do. They didn't have the access to phones at the level we do. They didn't have Amazon Prime to get things in two days. They didn't have Walmart delivery grocery and I was not paid to advertise these places. But I'm just telling you how easy it is for us. We don't understand what our parents went through. They had to drive everywhere. There was no such thing as Uber or Uber Eats food be delivered. Pizza delivery was probably the only thing that existed. So we won't understand. Now when we get older and then our children grow up and then they have children, they won't understand the difficulties we went through because the era became easier. And they got access to most, more things. So we live in this world, but we know that our parents can tell us the wrong things we've done or the things they did for our upbringing. So we have somewhat of a worldly example. But when it comes to Allah, we have no example. The amount of things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done for us, we can never comprehend it. We can never understand it. It's beyond our comprehension, it's beyond our understanding. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا If Allah says, O oh you who have wronged themselves, لَا تَقْنَتُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ It is haram to lose hope in Allah's mercy. I barely ever use the word haram, I'm telling you. It is haram. To lose hope in Allah's Rahmah. We all have one destination. We have one goal. And that is to get to Jannah. We are all on the same team to get to Jannah. We all need to work together to get to Jannah. Allah's Rahmah is such that there's no limited seatings in Jannah. There's no limited seats in Jannah. Allah's Rahmah is such He can have all of us and millions more. And Jannah has space. There's no limited seatings in Jannah. We're all working together to get to Jannah. So I told you at the beginning, at times, there's something we dislike, but it's good for you. And at times, there's something you love, but it's not good for you. How do we come to that understanding? How do we know what's good for us, what's bad for us? Because right now, I'm going to connect both things with you. I'm going to connect individuals, meaning you, uh, people, human beings our own interactions, and then Allah. Both, keep both in mind. I'm not just talking about us and Allah, I'm talking about our own interactions too. We have fights, we have arguments. At times, we don't want to do something because we don't like it, but for the sake of community, it's better for you. And at times, we really want to do something, but we can't come to that understanding that it's not good for you, but the majority are saying it's not good for you, we don't follow it. So I'm not just talking about our connection between you and Allah, us and Allah, I'm talking about our own interactions too. So the first point is, 
That at times we will hate something, we won't like something, but it's good for us, and we will love something, but it's bad for us. How do we come to this acknowledgement? How do we understand that? The Prophet sallallahu made a very beautiful dua. Oh Allah, I ask you to forgive me for those sins I knowingly committed. I did it on purpose. And oh Allah, I asked you, I ask you to forgive me for those sins I unknowingly committed. Maybe I committed a sin I didn't know, Ya Allah. Maybe I made a mistake I didn't know, Allah. Ya Allah, this is a very important dua. Because we as human beings have trouble humbling ourselves. It's all about us being here. And Allah gave us an example. Humble yourself in front of your parents, you'll never understand. We need to learn to take ourselves from here. See, this is how we're trained in life. You're down here, you need to come here. And Allah is saying, you're up, you think you're up here, and you need to come down here. In our life, we're trained that you started from the bottom, getting to the top. And when it comes to Allah, we say we're at the top, and Allah is saying, come down. Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, explains, ilmun nafi' Beneficial knowledge is knowledge that humbles you. Beneficial knowledge is not that, that, not that that creates pride in you and arrogance in you, but I know. Imam Ghazali, rahmatullahi alayhi, says, beneficial knowledge tells you you don't know. Beneficial knowledge tells you you don't know. We as human beings are going to get in fights. We're going to get in arguments. But at times keep this verse in mind. It could be that the person in front of me is saying something that is good for me, but I don't know. How do we get that acknowledgement? Humble yourself. Make this dua secondly. So the second point is that there's times where we could be wrong. The second point is make this dua. Oh Allah, I ask you to forgive me those sins that I committed knowingly, and I ask you to forgive me for those sins that I committed unknowingly. If you can make this dua a habit of this dua, it'll do a number of things. It'll humble you because you don't know what you did unknowingly. What did Allah say at the end of that verse? Wallahu ya'lam wa antum la ta'lam. Allah knows and you don't know. Allah knows and you don't know. We don't know. But you're a human being, you're bound to make mistakes. But we don't know what they are. Make this dua, make a habit of making this dua. Then Allah will open up your hearts from things you never thought were wrong. Allah will open up your hearts, Allah will open up your chest with guidance. When Allah opens up your chest towards guidance, and guidance is easily accepted, what more do you need? So in, open to op in order to open up our chest and our heart, we have to acknowledge that at times we could do something wrong. It could be that our wives have some complaint against the husband, the children have some complaints against the parent, the students have some complaint against the teacher, the teachers have some problem with their colleagues, the employees have some problem with their co-workers, and they have problem with their bosses and their CEOs and their managers. We have problems within each other, but because our hearts aren't open, we're not ready to accept that we can do something wrong. It's extremely difficult for us to our humble ourselves. But Allah is saying at times you make mistakes, you don't even know you were making a mistake. If we could just do this part, half the problems in this ummah will be solved. Because maybe I'm wrong, you're right, I'm wrong, I don't know what I was talking about. But our wives can't tell us. The husband can't tell the wives, there's no communication. There's no communication between the children, the children can't talk to their parents. Dad, every time I tell you, you, you respond to me in a rude way, I don't want to deal with you no more. Mom, every time I try to tell you about my issue, you just yell at me, you swear at me, I can't, I can't take this no more, Mom. Mom, I don't want to tell you. Parents, you're human beings. Till this day you make mistakes. Just because your child made a mistake, don't make them feel like they did something against Allah and the whole world. No, no, guide them. Son, this is world. Kullu bani adam khatta'un. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, you're bound to make mistakes. Making mistakes isn't the problem. Making mistakes isn't the problem. Being pushed down is not the problem. Not getting up is the problem. Falling down is not the problem. Not getting up is the problem. Falling down, Allah said it would happen. You will fail again and again and again and again and again and again and Allah will, Allah will ultimately give you success. But falling down is not the problem. Getting up is the problem. 
So son, daughter, you made a mistake, ask Allah to forgive you and get right back to action and never do it again. So I just want to quickly go over this. Imam Nawi rahimallah and Riyadh al-Salihin in the chapter of Tawbah. Bab al-Tawbah, I'm just going to give you a summary of it and we'll end the speech inshallah. Imam Nawi rahimallah says, قَالَ الْعُلَمَاءُ الْتَوْبَةُ وَاجِبَةٌ And I'm not just talking about Tawbah between you and Allah, I'm talking about Tawbah between each other too. And Imam Nawi rahimallah addresses both of them. That the ulama have said, التَوْبَةُ وَاجِبَةٌ مِّن كُلِّ ذَنْبٍ That Tawbah, repentance, forgiveness is wajib for every mistake. فَإِنْ كَانَتِ الْمَعْسِيَةِ If the ma'siyah, if the sin that you did is بَيْنَ الْعَبْدِ وَبَيْنَ اللَّهِ if the mistake you made is between you and Allah, there's three conditions. If the mistake you made is with another human being too, then there's four conditions. If the mistake, the sin, the disobedience, the thing you did wrong, the sin that you committed is between just you and Allah, then there's three conditions. If it's with another, another human being as are involved. So if you do something wrong to another human being, there's a fourth condition. So Imam Nawi rahimallah says, that number one is, that you stop committing that sin. And yuqli al ma'siyah, you remove that ma'siyah from your life. Number two, this is the most hardest one to an extent. First one, we remove the sin. Number two, we feel regret that I did something wrong. This is hard. It's hard to say I did something. It's wrong to utter those words. I'm wrong. I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It's difficult. Why do you think Allah says, subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He loves it when His slaves do tawbah. Nothing brings more joy to Allah than when a slave does tawbah. So number one, we stop doing that sin. Number two, we feel regret. And number three, we make a firm determination that we'll never repeat it. Number one, we stop committing that sin. If we're committing it, we stop it. Number two, we feel regret. Number three, we make a firm determination that we'll never commit that sin again. But if it's between each other, if you did something wrong, then those three conditions still apply. See, we make a mistake. If I cursed at my brother, and I sweared at my brother, or I sweared at my sister, I cursed at my sister, even to get Allah's forgiveness, this fourth condition applies. So when I do something wrong to another human being, I'm not just looking for that human being's forgiveness. If that human being does ask for forgiveness, and I didn't fulfill the other three conditions, then that's not enough. So these three conditions still apply when you do something to each other. And the fourth is you go to that brother, you go to that sister, and you ask them for forgiveness. We ask, we need to make sure that our hearts are clean. Our goal, our destination is one. It's all the same, it's Jannah. We're all on the same team. We all want to die with the kalma la ilaha illallah. Ultimately, all we want is Jannah. So keep these three conditions in mind. Number one, is that sometimes I'm wrong. Maybe I think it's good for me, but it's not good for me. Number two, make the dua of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah, forgive me for those sins that I committed knowingly, and forgive me for those sins that I committed unknowingly. <laughs> and number three, make a habit of doing tawbah and repentance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Make these three habits and all the issues between your family, all the issues between the community, all the issues between everyone, they will all be solved if these two conditions are kept in mind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst His beloved ones. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who repent to Him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those people who He forgives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannat al firdaus Jazakumullahu khayran wa akhir da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Mawla ya salli wa sallam